the first combine I ran my 40-yard dash in, uh, Chris, was the 2005 combine. Right. Um, and I, I, at the time, I, I was just thinking, I did it once. I didn't even know they were recording it when I was on a break. Right. Uh, Terrell okay. Davis just kind of challenged you. And I and went out there. I had no idea the right. NFL Network was recording it. They showed it. I had no intention of doing it the following year. But this gentleman came up to me, head coach of the Seattle Seahawks at the time, and requested it, saying, you're going to run again, aren't you? And I'm like, I don't think so. And he goes, you have to. <laughs> just have some medical staff there to make sure you don't get hurt, but you have to. And I ran it again, and the rest is history. So I don't know if it's part of Mike Holmgren's of football life, but it should be. Mike Holmgren here on the Rich Eisen Show. Coach, you there? <laughs> hey, Rich. How's it going? Is it part I of it? I want to tell you, I, I think that's in the opening segment. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure, but I, I, I talked about it extensively. Yes. And I, and I said, if memory serves me correctly, because uh, I'm a little older now, but mm -hmm. and so are you. Mm -hmm. uh, but that uh, did you get a little hamstring? Did you have a little, there was a ha injury of some kind? That was a couple of years later. I ran it three times. I got hurt doing it the third time. I said, well, then we can't air it. And Mayock insisted I air me getting hurt. So, yes, that did happen. So you're saying, Coach Holmgren, you're saying uh, somewhere right after the Bill Walsh stuff, the Montana stuff, the Young stuff, the Favre stuff, comes my 40-yard dash that you helped uh, inspire for a second time. Yeah, I, haven't, I have not seen the final copy yet. <laughs> I have not seen the final copy. And there is a chance. You know how producers, you know how these guys cut things out. There's a chance they'll cut it out. But, but I, I hope it's in there, Rich. Well, I really do. Now I understand why you were so successful, that you just shoot it, you just shoot it right to, your, uh, to, your, to your, your players. You just, you're, you're honest, you're up front, uh, and you're, you're, you're gentle while doing it. So I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Um, uh, Coach, uh, I'd love to ask you with Favre's name in the in, – in, in, um, in the world so much these days because of the milestone that Breeze passed and what Mahomes looks like. I want to take it one at a time. What do you think of Drew Breeze at age 39 doing what he's been doing so far this year? Well, it's, re it's remarkable. I've always been a Drew Breeze fan and um, I love to watch him play. He's, he's a great thrower, a great leader. And the fact that he's playing at such a high level at his age, I mean, that says something. I mean, it, you know, you talk about Tom Brady of Drew Breeze, these guys that are that have played a long, long time and uh, are still playing at such a high level. It's remarkable. And, and the same thing could, was said about Brett. You know, he played a long time, and uh, he was still playing at a very high level near the end of his career. So uh, that's a different thing now. It wasn't, uh, the, uh, I think, a lot of quarterbacks, you kind of had a shelf life. You, all of a sudden you started hitting a, a certain age, and then it started to change. But Drew's remarkable. I'm happy for him. He's a good, great guy. So would you say he's the MVP of this season, knowing that Mahomes could top 50 touchdown passes and what Gurley has looked like for a Rams team that has as many wins as the Saints? Well, I think that's going to be a tough call. I, I think because of if you're talking about his most valuable player, Gurley certainly falls into that category for that team. They're having a great season. Uh, Mahomes, because he's so young, I think you people you just go, wow. You know, they did the same thing with Brett when he, he got his MVPs awards uh you know young quarterback playing at such a high level it, it's it's in kansas city of course is doing a great job with andy reed uh and then drew Brees, he's kind of this i would say the sentimental favorite if you will you know because he's he's played a long time and uh and and it, it's it's a great example of of the perfect i think of the of the perfect coach with the perfect player you know you got sean payton with with breeze you got andy with Mahomes, you know, and you got McVay with Gurley and his offense, and and that's sometimes overlooked that that relationship, and so yeah, there it's a tough call. I, I sentimentally Breeze, and I love I love the other guys, but Breeze is my guy. Mike Holmgren here on the Rich Eisen Show, and uh, again Andy Reid is on your coaching tree, uh, coach, and so we're hearing so much that Reid liked Mahomes, targeted Mahomes, saw Mahomes, drafted Mahomes, grooming Mahomes, because it reminds him so much of Favre. Would you agree with that assessment? I think I would. I think I would. You, you know, he has great arm strength. He moves. He's a little bit unpredictable. <laughs> uh, you know, and, and to say that about Brett would not be an understatement or overstatement. Uh, and I think that uh, 
and Andy saw that. And and Andy, listen, Andy also you know recommended to me Matt Hasselbeck. So Andy has a good eye for quarterbacks. He really does. And not only that is he knows how to coach him, and uh, he's doing all the right things for Mahomes and opening up stuff that you know he didn't learn from me. He, he he's just doing it. He's creating. So, uh, but I think that I think that's a fair assessment to to say that Mahomes reminds him of Brett. And what about this offense? Is there anything that does resemble the stuff that you were doing with Brett and Reed on the staff with Mooch and Gruden uh, back in the day? Well, I think so. I think there's a basis. You know, there's a there's a fundamental basis that I learned from Coach Bill Walsh, and and then I carried on, and the guys have carried on a little bit. And and while they say, okay, it's the West, call it what you want to call it, uh, because of the new type of style of play in college, you're going to have that sort of influence as well. But the the basics about th- throwing the ball and controlled passing game, taking shots, spreading the field, using your formations to get mismatches, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, and they'll develop their own their own thing. You always add on and develop your own philosophy to go with something you learn. But I think the basics, now when you get down to the nitty-gritty of it, yeah, I see a lot of similarities. So have you spoken to Reed? Has Reed reached out to you about Mahomes throughout this process of of coming up with one of the more creative offenses we've seen in the 21st century at work? Well, I, well I'd, Rich, I'd like to say it was all me. Nice. You know, but, but it, 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 I haven't talked to Andy. Other than the fact we text about how it's going, I wish him well, have a great Thanksgiving, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I'm going to be working the Super Bowl a little bit, so it would be really nice if, if, if one of the guys I knew pretty well, like last year I had a chance to work with or deal with Doug Peterson, who played for me. Mm-hmm. That's kind of fun. It makes that game even more fun for me. So um, then let's let's go into what you just said moments ago. Mike Holmgren, his Football Life premieres Friday, 8 Eastern on NFL Network. Andy Reid suggested Matt Hasselbeck. He said, take Matthew when you went to Seattle. Is that what happened? Well, we were in Green Bay at the time. Mm-hmm. And, and then, um, no, he said, we drafted Matt. Mm-hmm. You know, we drafted him late, but we drafted him in the sixth round, I think, in, in Green Bay. And it was on Andy's recommendation. And so then I got a chance to experience, to learn about Matt a little bit there. And then when I went to Seattle and had a chance to attempt, we looked at trying to find another quarterback to come in and play for us. You know that that all helped because I knew Matt and I trusted Andy and and I trusted him to get him to Green Bay in the first place. All right, what 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 do you think of when you think of your Seattle years, Mike? Well, I th- I think that you know it was it was a great experience. We live here, Rich. You know, and my kids are here, and my mm-hmm. grandkids are up here for the most part, and it's a great part of the country. Uh, you know, and uh, but and and we did some fun things and and accomplished a lot and built the built I think the the team up to where it is now the fan base the twelves that was something that happened when when we were getting good and now it's now it's taken off and it's part of the culture up here you know I, I I'm the one thing I wish we I wish we could have taken care of business in that Super Bowl that's that's the one thing that but I I don't look back too much I honestly don't I'm one of the lucky guys who got a chance to coach for a long time and and uh, our time in Seattle was great and now we live here and and we're doing some other things so and it's I'd, good i'd love to give you the floor on the the late paul allen and, and uh and what he did to uh in any way uh lend to the success of your years in seattle well it goes without saying he gave me a chance first of all he hired me and then uh he built the new stadium he he kept the team the t- he kept the team in seattle so he was responsible for the football team being there and giving me my chance and you know, in dealing with owners, Rich, you know, uh, you know, it's a tough league. It's a tough business because everyone wants to win, and uh, some coaches have a little. It, it's it's the quick hook at times. We've all seen that. Uh, my time with Paul, while we were getting to be a good football team and going through some growing pains early on, he always said, "What can I do to help?" He never he you know he wanted to know what was going on, but he let he hired people, let them do their their jobs, and. Uh, and then his thing was, how can I help you? How, how can we make this better? And that's all you can ever – that's the best thing that any owner can ever do for a coach. And, and I'd say he was, he was one of the best in, in, in sports. Yeah, and then uh, obviously you had the people and Bob Harlan uh, in, in, uh, in Green Bay. What's your first memory of meeting Mr. D, Eddie DeBartolo, Pro Football Hall of Famer, when you first started off with the 49ers? Mike? Yeah, I mean, I, I have a lot of stories about – uh, Mr. Can you, D. Can fact, you tell was, any of them? Yeah, I can. I can. I, I was uh, I was privileged to write a letter on his behalf to get help 
hopefully it helped a little bit in, in when he went into the Hall of Fame. But I remember it came in Green Bay uh, that we were – it was cold and miserable late in the season, and we were struggling a little bit. And, and in the old press box at Green Bay, the um, – or the scouting box, uh, we, we threw a pass to Jerry Rice uh, right at the end uh, of the game to win, and he broke a tackle and went about 70 yards. We won a tough ball game, and kind of uh, it was tough. What I didn't realize, and I stood straight up, and I pushed my hands in the air and popped some of those tiles that had been in Lambeau for probably 100 years, <laughs> and all this junk came out of the ceiling. All this garbage and, and stuff fell on all this stuff. I turned around and Mr. DeBarlo was standing right behind me, and and he I didn't realize I was calling the game. He I didn't realize he was standing right behind me, and he and I turn around. He goes, I go, Mr. DeBarlo. He goes, Mike, and he gives me this. He grabs me and like uh, Italians do on occasion, he gave me this big kiss. You know, oh great job. And I go, oh, as we're, as we're piled with all this junk from the from the roof and everything, that was one of my er, <laughs> remembered. <laughs> So you and Odell Beckham both left your mark in uh, Lambeau on occasion. That's what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, we did. <laughs> uh, in the walls of Lambeau. And so uh, you were the quarterback's coach at Brigham Young, and how did you get to the 49ers, Mike? Well, I was coaching there, and, and of course I had the privilege of coaching Steve Young and, and Robbie Bosco at, at, at BYU. We won the national championship. And at the time, my kids were young, and and, uh, and so I was you know, looking. I actually applied – to be the head coach at University of Montana and interviewed there and then uh, didn't get that job and came back and I'm very disappointed, obviously. And then a friend of mine uh, called me from uh, the Bay Area and said, listen, the quarterback coach for the 49ers left. And, uh, you know, why don't you apply there? Come back out to the Bay Area. I said, well, I'll shoot. And then, I mean, I'm four years removed from high school coaching. I don't know. That's not going to happen. He goes, we'll do it. And so I, I did it. I mean, I reached out, and I got an interview and interviewed with Coach Walsh and, and all the coaches out there in San Francisco. Grew up there, of course. And then they said, you know, uh, Bill was very honest with me. He said, you know, I have a, a couple guys in mind, and, and uh, you know, you did, you did a good job, but if, if this other fellow wants the job, I think I'm going to go that way. And so I said, great, thanks for the opportunity, which was kind of what I thought it was going to be. And I came back to BYU and I'm out jogging one day. I was there two weeks, and uh, and the secretary goes, uh, 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 Coach Walsh phoned. I told him you were out jogging. I said, <laughs> what? <laughs> what did you do? <laughs> well, he said he'd phone back. So I said, okay, good. Wherever I am, grab me, get me. And so then Bill phoned and said, listen, would you like to take – we'd we'd like to hire you. And I said, uh, well, i got to talk this – you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm going <laughs> – Instead of screaming and yelling on the phone, I said, i got to talk this over with Kathy and just make sure. He goes, okay, I'll talk to you tonight at home. So I went home and said, hey, we got a chance. And uh, sure enough, I got the job. So coming back to this city I grew up in and was very special. Coaching for Bill Walsh and then coaching Joe Montana, right? Yeah. That's it. That's the gig. Yeah, that's the gig. I, I, I want to tell you, Rich, though, that <laughs> until I got there, Joe wasn't very good. <laughs> That's right. He's coachable. Don't forget that, right? No, I'll tell you Joe what. Cole. Another another quick story is sure. that, that I I was wondering how I'm what I'm gonna how can I help Joe is what I'm thinking. Yeah, this guy's great. He's won MVPs, Super Bowls, and all this kind of stuff. And 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 Bill came up to me one day. I'd been there about two weeks. And it was the off season, of course. And and uh, he goes, "Listen, Joe's coming over. Why don't you guys grab a cup of coffee and you know talk and get to know each other?" So I said, "Okay." This is going to be good. I'm nervous. I kind of nervous. I'm going. What I'm going to do here? And uh, he comes in. We go down to the cafeteria, and we're about halfway there. And he stops me in the hallway. And this is Joe. And he goes, Mike. First, first of all, I want to tell you, I want you to coach me hard. If I'm doing something that I shouldn't be doing, tell me. If I'm, if my technique's wrong, tell me, because I want this thing to work. And I'm thinking to myself, I didn't. I said thanks. And, and then I'm thinking to myself as we continue to walk it down to get a cook. I go, hey, listen, the MVP of the National Football League, one of the greatest players of all time, just kind of made it easy for me. You know, he he, he this is going to work well, and it did. You know, he's a special guy. What was it for your perspective on the famed Montana drive against Cincinnati? You were the quarterbacks coach, right? Not yet the OC in that game. I was, no, I wasn't the OC. Yeah, I wasn't the OC. It was a different. It was. Uh, uh, but that Super Bowl, you know, uh, Denny Green had left and gone to Stanford, and uh, it was Bill. We didn't know at the time, but it was Bill's last 
year coaching the 49ers. And so we're in the game and, and the playoffs and stuff. He, he, I, he let, I called a lot of the games where that was different because Bill would call the games. And uh, so he kind of gave me that responsibility for the playoffs and the, a lot of the Super Bowl. And so, uh, and he said, listen, call a play. If I don't like it, I'll change it, but you go ahead and do it. And so uh, that was a great confidence builder for me and, uh, and kind of told me, listen, I can do this. I mean, you know, because he kind of gave me the opportunity. And on that drive, you know, I, I probably called three of the four of the plays and Bill called a couple and Joe Audible to a couple. And uh, <laughs> uh, it, it, it was... <laughs> It was quite something because he and then and then we we won and I don't know how many seconds were left in that game but it was a great win for the for the team obviously. Who called the throw to Taylor? Uh, I think Coach Walsh did. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, you know I would like to take credit for that, nice. Rich. But <laughs> and, and all if we're being real honest, we are. We we you and I have always been honest. With we have. Each other. We yeah. have. Hey, before uh, I let you go on this, uh, Coach, um, you know we talk so much about offense and quarterbacks. Uh, Reggie White uh, and his free agent signing in Green Bay. I'd love to hear the story uh, of how that happened and what you think it meant to not only your team but to Green Bay, period, moving forward. Well, it, it meant everything to our team at that time. He was, uh, uh, you know, one of the best, if not the best, defensive players I've ever seen. And uh, I thought at the time when he was free agent, and it was the start of free agency, and he was uh, taking the tour, if you will, I believe he went to Cleveland or Baltimore and, and different places, and they roll out the red carpet and and give him fur coats and keys to the city, all sorts <laughs> of stuff. And, and Ron Wolf came in and said, "Hey, we're, we're going to bring Reddy, Reggie in for um, free agency." I said, well, "We're going to what are we going to do? Give him a block of cheese? You know, I mean, well, how are we going to do this? How can we compete with with these with the other stuff that's going on?" He goes, "No, we'll." And so Ron was pretty confident. So he comes in. We meet him. Great guy. So then Ray Rhodes and I went down to his home, kind of a, a little bit of a surprise visit uh, a couple days later in Tennessee. And we had lunch with his family and, and had a great, really getting to know one another, you know, because he still hadn't made up his decision, made his decision. Then I came home and, and, and Reg is a Christian and, and, and you know, uh, as, I, as I am, and, and uh, I thought I could do this. I got on the phone and left him a message. I said, Reggie, this is God. I want you to go to Green Bay. <laughs> And, uh, and we, you know, I, I just prayed that he, he understood what I, <laughs> that I was, uh, just kind of having a little smile on my face when I said it. And, right. and, uh, and when he came, we had a good chuckle about it. And I think he, well, he made all the difference in the world at the, at the time he helped us recruit great black athletes, you know, in there. Cause Green Bay's a smaller community and, and it didn't have the, you know, it wasn't Los Angeles or Miami or someplace. And and he really helped us with that, and and we changed the, the culture up there. I think uh, a lot. Coach, I could talk to you all day, man. Uh, I've always enjoyed our times talking with each other, or you coaxing me back to the forty yard dash line. And your <laughs> your football life is something I will not miss, and I hope nobody else does. Friday eight Eastern on NFL Network, and I hope we get to chat again very soon. I also have too, Rich. Thank you, thank well, you, and I hope you're you're healed up. And and uh, I'm all good. Next, I'm re- the next time we're together. I don't know. It won't be a 40 yard dash. Maybe some uh, sit ups or I, I don't know. Something. We'll figure it out. Right, last yeah. one for you. I remember interviewing you for all those years uh, that you had nothing but daughters and even your cats were female. Are any of your grandchildren uh, a masculine child? Yeah, Go. well, the first four were granddaughters. So I said, no, that's not in the cards. But then, then four little guys came. So wow. We got, we got nine grandkids, and then they tipped the scales. Uh, there's five girls and four boys. So. Okay. Well, you know, women what? rule the world, as you know. So it's a, I, I, I know that very well. <laughs> it's all good. Coach, uh, congrats on life and a football life. We'll Thanks, chat Rich. soon. I appreciate it. Thank you. The best. That's Mike Holmes. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.